you can learn a lot about government by hanging out in Washington, D.C. But did you know that most of the laws you live by come from your state government? Take a look. America is comprised of 50 states united as one nation. You might think that the laws we live by come from the national government. But actually, most government comes from the states. The Tenth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution declares that powers not given to the national government are reserved to the states respectively. So each state has the power to enact policies and laws not covered by the authority of the national government. One of these is the power to establish public schools. Each state determines how funds should be distributed to public schools and the courses and classes that should be taught to meet state educational standards. Another power reserved to the states is determining license requirements for professionals. Such requirements make sure that you will get the best services possible from a doctor, a lawyer, or a teacher. Right as number one, and then move down. One of the most important powers is establishing and maintaining state government. Each state has a constitution that explains it among its branches. Like the national government, all states have three branches of government. The executive branch, which enforces the laws, is led by the governor. The legislative branch makes laws. And the judicial branch makes decisions about the laws. And just like the national government, each branch of state government has powers that can restrain the actions of the other two. This is the system of checks and balances. Each state constitution also has a declaration of rights, similar to the Bill of Rights that protects individual liberties. State governments are very similar in structure to the national government, and state government has an enormous influence on our daily lives. States take an active role in promoting the health and welfare of their citizens. Most fund ambitious public health, safety, and welfare programs. These programs immunize children against diseases and provide funds to keep people healthy. The states distribute cash assistance, often called welfare, to those who need it. They regulate public safety by establishing and paying for police and correction systems. And they also maintain state highway systems. Today, we enjoy a society that is relatively peaceful and safe. We owe a large part of that to the hard work and foresight of our state governments. Now it's your turn to answer a question. What is one responsibility of state government? There are 50 states, the Constitution establishes a federal form of government. Each of the 50 states has its own government. Powers not given to the national gover government by the Constitution are reserved for the states. The Constitution denies powers to both state and national government. Evolution of Federalism there are two different types of federalism in our country's history, dual federalism and cooperative federalism. Dual federalism is from 1789 to 1932. 
This means that federal and state governments are co-equals. It's a narrow interpretation of the Constitution. Federal government only has jurisdiction if clearly expressed in the Constitution. An example would be to coin money. The state has a greater role and power in things like education and race relations. <laughs> what does dual federalism have in common with a layer cake? Cooperative federalism, 1933 to the present. National government is clearly supreme over states. There's a broad interpretation of the necessary and proper clause. Federal government intervenes or assists in some areas traditionally left to the states. Examples of this would be education, health care, civil rights. This began with the New Deal program. What does cooperative federalism have in common with a marble cake? What do you think? Would it be possible for the U.S. to return to a period of dual federalism again, where states would have more power and there would be less interference by the national government? Explain your answer. Distribution of powers. Make sure that you get everything down on the chart. Virginia's government structure. Each state has its own constitution. The Constitution of Virginia establishes a government with three branches, legislative, executive, and judicial. The legislative branch. We have a general assembly. It's a bicameral legislature. The House of Delegates and the Virginia Senate. It meets annually for a fixed number of days, which would be 60. Areas of legislative concern. Education, to promote and engage citizenry. Public health, to protect and promote health of its citizens. Environment, to protect natural resources. State budget, to approve a biennial two-year budget for how the state spends money. Levying and collecting taxes. The lawmaking process. First, a bill is proposed, then they work in committees, then they debate on the floor, they vote on the bill by both houses. It's the signing or vetoing of the bill by the governor. How is this process similar and different to the national government, Congress? These are some good resources for you to use. SOL Pass is great. This is the area that we're focused on right now. The executive branch. Governor, selected for a four-year term. He appoints the cabinet who oversees specific functions of the government. The lieutenant governor is elected to a four-year term. 
The Attorney General is elected to a four-year term also. He oversees the state's law firm. Carrying out laws. Cabinet secretaries and departments, agencies, commissions, and regulatory boards make up the state bureaucracy. They administer and enforce laws, regulate aspects of business and the economy, provide services. The governor's role. First of all, he's chief of state. He's also chief legislator. He's chief administrator, he's party in chief, and he's also commander in chief. The judicial branch have a Supreme Court, it's a court of appeals, circuit courts, district courts, and juvenile and domestic relations courts. There's also small claims court. 